Miking your equipment on stage doesn't have to be a complicated thing, but there are some things you should be aware of. First and foremost is being conscious of where the mics are pointing in relation to the PA speakers, especially the floor monitors. This is where most feedback problems arise. I'm sure you know what feedback is. It's that incredibly high-pitched, eardrum-exploding squeal that sometimes occurs. It can damage your ears, definitely turn off your audience, and damage your equipment. But do you know what causes it? Let's look at how a vocalist mic can affect feedback. In ideal situations, the front of house speakers will be located in front of the band pointing towards the audience, the floor monitors on the stage pointed towards the performers, and the vocal mics are pointed away from the floor monitors. If using cardioid pattern mics, the performer will hear what is projected from the monitor and the mic will pick up very little of it and feedback should be minimized. If any of the mics are pointed in the direction of the house speakers or monitors, you'll probably experience horrible feedback. That's because the mics, the PA speakers, and the monitors are all part of the same loop. Anything projecting from the PA or monitor speakers will be picked up by the mics, re-amplified, and re-projected again and again at rapid speed until a feedback point is reached. This will only take a microsecond. It's unprofessional, your audience will hate it, and you may damage someone's hearing, not to mention blow out your speaker cones. Never point mics at PA speakers or monitors. Also, it helps if the singer doesn't cup the mic with his hands. This can cause feedback too. Sometimes it's hard to avoid where mics are pointed, so we need another solution to the feedback problem. One popular way is to use a 31 band graphic equalizer for each power amp input. We discussed using EQs to improve the quality of sound when we looked at channel strips. Those three or four control EQs are referred to as parametric equalizers because they have a single control that sweeps across a frequency range until you find the best setting. To control feedback, we don't necessarily want to change the overall sound we're hearing. Feedback is caused by a very narrow frequency range going crazy, so we only want to eliminate the offending frequency that's feeding back. The 31 band EQ allows us to do just that. The entire frequency range for the signal is cut up into 31 distinct slices. Each control on the EQ controls just a very narrow frequency range of the entire signal. Once the narrow slice of the frequency that's feeding back is located, you can turn it down or just turn it off completely. This is a Samson 2-channel 31-band EQ. It can manage frequencies from 20 Hz to 20,000 Hz. That's 20 kilohertz. Each of the control sliders manages one-third of an octave in that 20 to 20,000 Hz range. Depending on how you set the unit, each slider can both increase or decrease each of those frequency bands, either 6 dB or 12 dB. For monitor applications like we've been discussing, it can be set for what's called cut only. This allows the entire range of the control to only decrease the gain level on each frequency range. Using a procedure called ringing out, we can gradually increase the gain on each microphone until it begins to produce the feedback howl. Then by listening, we can determine the offending frequencies and turn them down. Samson explains the entire ringing out procedure in their user manual. Performing this task will allow you to access the greatest level of volume in your system without feedback. 15 band and 31 band EQs aren't just used to control feedback. You can use them with a channel insert instead of using the parametric EQ on the channel strip if you wish to have the ability to micro-adjust that channel sound. 